So, Burnley won, Arsenal won. Very disappointing result. What did you make of the game, Chig? Yeah, um, disappointing. That's all you could say. It's, it's, it's real disappointing. Um, once again, we, we've gone to one of these Stoke-type sides and been out for out gr- at, at somebody, you know, a team that's just out-grinded us, out-hustled us. And when that wasn't enough, we shot ourselves in our own foot. And that's basically the story of the game. Mm. Uh, I've just done um, a fan cam with Kenny and with Claude, and both of them were very, very scathing attacks on Thomas Party today. They said both of them had the same narrative of um, first half an hour, he looked great. Then after that, he just disappeared. Yeah, and, I think... Uh, I, I th- and the irony is, he was, he was, he was my best player. He was, the, <laughs> he was the player that I said was mad in my uh, mad in the match. Because I actually thought the first half an hour... I thought he was fantastic. Um, and then like, um, I think you made the point in Kenny Ken's fan cam, because I have watched it, um, that, you know, it's like, it's like Arteta said, maybe criticised him for being, for, for, for attacking so much or, or something in the first half, because literally in the second half, he didn't once attack. He just sat back. He, he looked like he was more or less a passenger. He was barely in the game after that. Mm. Um, and, and I'm not sure what that was about. Um, so yeah, it, 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 from a tactical point of view, from a from a game point of view, I just thought it was just a, it was it was a really poor performance in the end. From a game that for the first 25 minutes, I thought we were going to blow them away, and mm. we ended up blowing ourselves down the road like a piece of paper. Yeah, we we started off so quick as well, like. You know, we we had the goal from a Bamiang, lovely little ball from Thomas Party through to William, um, who then pull it to a Bamiang. He'd done a couple of step overs, lovely little finish, caught the keeper off um off guard, and he's a tall goalkeeper, six foot seven, I think he is. He couldn't get down quick enough, and we're thinking, right, lovely jubbly, we're in here, one nil. We then get another chance where it's a bit of ping ball in the uh, in the box, and and a Bamiang sliced it wide. I don't think he expected it to come to him. And then Saka puts a chance wide. I don't know how he missed that. And then Granite Xhaka happens. And all of a sudden, they're they're the then team, they're the team that are then in the ascendancy. That gave them confidence. In the second half, I thought, okay, well, let's see what we're made of now. And we just we just shriveled until until that last little spurt and flurry at the end of the game, where it was just block, block, post, block. You know, other than that. You know, there was a couple of penalty incidents. What did you make? Of, obviously, the second one we we know was the shoulder. What did you make of the first one? Do you think that was a penalty? Um, what was the first one again? Remind me. The one where Pepe went to pull it round uh, Peters, I think it was. Oh, of course. Yeah, he had his arm out. Um, yeah, I, I I thought it was a bit high at the time. Um, I I I didn't think it. I I knew it'd be ruled out. That's why I I, I didn't particularly wasn't celebrating or anything. I was expecting it to be ruled out. And I think that that will be the narrative today. That will be the narrative that, you know, whenever, you know, we, we've gone into a game like this, uh, people always look towards VAR, especially when VAR has got involved. And that just seems to be the general pattern with Arsenal fans. It's just like, mate, if we need VAR to save us that many times, we can't be doing that good. We can't but, be doing that Yeah, good. No, that's true. It's true. What did you make of his subs today? Because... He took off Martin Odegaard, who at the time I thought, I don't think he was doing anything amazing, but he was a creative spark in terms of pushing us forward. And and, and he had some lovely little passes through the lines, especially in the first half. Second half, again, I do think he faded a little bit, but he then put William in that position. And then five minutes later, he took off William. And I was like, okay, so you've took off Odegaard, you've took off William. Where's that creativity spark coming from? What did, what did you make of that? Because I think he... I think he, I don't know what his thought process was on that because there wasn't anyone really in that position. It was I just like, like nobody knew I what to like, do after that. Yeah, I think he just felt that he needed to make some sort of changes and hadn't really thought the latter end of that process through. Um, I think he just felt like he needed to change something uh, because, like you say, I actually thought probably two out of the three changes he made kind of almost hurt us in the end to the point where. We offered nothing after that. Yeah, we did have that ping ball chance at the end, but that was almost a kind of a chance that just happened to fall to us. And even then, we never converted it. 
So I, I just don't, I don't know. I think it's just the story of our season, mate. You know, I think until um, Arteta learns from those mistakes and mistakes like substitutes, by the way, managing a game, making the correct substitutes, ensuring that we're not losing momentum, ensuring that when we do lose momentum, we re- regain it as quickly as possible. We will always have conversations like this. Mm. Yeah, um, obviously we've got a big game coming up on um, on Thursday, away to Olympiacos, the uh, the nemesis revenge. I actually see people saying that Burnley away was supposed to be a revenge mission. Uh, that didn't go down too well today, really, did it? But do you think we can get some level of revenge, if you want to call it that, on Thursday? Because we did win one nil there last season against them, but then obviously we know what happened. Um, at the at the Emirates when they they knocked us out in in the last minute. Do you think we can get a foothold in that game? I do. I do think that the fact that it's an away leg first does give me a little bit more confidence because we then know what to do and it is at the Emirates this time round rather than being at their ground. Ironically, but do you see us getting a win? And 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 if not, do you see us going through overall? I mean, we always have a chance. We always have a chance, and like you say. It helps at the fact that we are at the Emirates for our home leg. Um, and, you know, we are playing the away leg first. Um, I I don't have a good feeling about the game, about the tie. I think Olympiacos will knock us out again personally. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but having said that, um, Arsenal just have an opportunity to try and work as hard as they can. Just because I think that doesn't mean that they need to accept that. So mm. I would like us to go out there and really show a bit of guts and take the game to them and see what happens, you know? Whether they will do that or not is another question with Arsenal. It just is what it is. Mm. And that's the thing. Obviously, um, just before we wrap up, we have got um, we have got Tottenham next weekend sandwiched in between them two big ties. Mm. What would you do in terms of um, starting eleven for that Tottenham game? Because we can't afford to go and lose to Tottenham. That's our biggest rival in terms of location of where they are placed in the in North London, round the corner from us. That is our biggest game, regardless of whether they're better than us or we're better than them. It's always a massive game, but mm. it is sandwiched in between these two games. Mm. Um, whether we win, lose, or draw on Thursday, would you still go with a strong side for the Tottenham 100%. game? We must play our strongest side in, in both games. Olympiacos, because let's face it, that's our season. And Tottenham, because that is our, like you say, it's our, one of our most important games of the season. And there is no excuse. There is no playing a second side against Tottenham. You out there, you look to win that game. And we must look to win both games. It's as simple as that. No, I appreciate that. Listen, uh, anybody who hasn't checked out Chig's player ratings, make sure you go and do that. Click on the uh, link in the title. It'll take you straight to his channel. Go and check out his channel. Subscribe to him as well. And Chig, thanks for coming back on, mate. I appreciate it.